Welcome back to Face the State. I'm Ariana Bennett. Thank you for staying with us. Well, if you look at patterns in crime and incarceration, there's a strong connection between criminal activity and a history of physical or sexual abuse in childhood. So reason stands that if we can reduce rates of childhood trauma, we might be able to reduce crime rates as well. And there's one group working to do just that here in Northern Nevada. So Rebecca Laveau with the Child Assault Prevention Project is here now to talk about all of that. Rebecca, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. All right, so tell me how, so it's, it's CAP for short? CAP, yes. Tell me how CAP got started. Well, CAP started in 1984. We're not a new agency. We've been here for a long time. And in the 80s, there was a huge boom in population. And along with that boom in population came an escalating amount of child abuse reports. And so the city of Sparks and the Child Abuse and Neglect Prevention Task Force joined forces and brought an, an organization out here to start our program. And the purpose was to go into the elementary schools and teach a, like a heads up, workshop for the kids to teach them how to deal with bullying, how to teach them to watch out for stranger dangers. Um, at that time there was no internet or cell phones, but uh, we taught them how to look out for secret touches, um, unsafe touches, and how to deal with people that they might know, love, and trust that might try to physically or sexually abuse them. And did you find that or do you find that this conversation that you have with kids is the first time anyone's ever had a conversation like this with them? A lot of the times that's true. We start in the second grade and these kids are young. They're seven years old and it's the first time that maybe they realize that what they're feeling or what they're seeing is not okay. And so they have a lot of questions. They have a lot of interaction with us during our workshops and if if they feel something's not all right, what we really want them to know is that they have the right to talk about it. They have the right to get help for themselves, and we help them identify some of the adult helpers that can be an advocate for them. Now, I feel like it has to be a, a, a tough line to walk between making sure they have all the information they need but not uh, traumatizing them by teaching them too much, if that makes sense. Right. The whole idea is empowerment. We're not there to scare them. And, and that is a fine line. You know, you want to give them all the tools. You want to load their toolbox with everything they need to get help for themselves without scaring them. And our program isn't scary. What we find is it's more that aha moment when kids really understand what the face of abuse is, what it looks like, what bullying really is. And then when they get that that feeling of, I can stand up for myself. I can talk about my issues. I can, I, I have rights, and those rights are to be protected. And they, they're, they're proud of themselves. Doing role plays with us, uh, practicing their skills. It, it really is quite a, a wonderful thing to see that they empower, they embrace that information. Now, when you go into these classrooms and you talk to these kids, do you learn from them things that, you know, things are happening in their lives already, you know, or are you discovering that this is happening a lot in Northern Nevada? It doesn't happen a lot, but it does happen. I mean, we realize not all children are abused. That's, that's, that's not the case. And we also realize that not all children that are abused are going to come forward to talk about it. But what we do want to do is make sure that if they're ready to talk about it, they know where to go, what to do, and how to ask for that help. How big of a problem is this in our community? Basically, in all communities, you, you look at one in three girls and one in seven boys being sexually abused before their 18th birthday. It's a big problem. It's a big statistic, if you will. But I think uh, the bigger problem is that 80% of all child abuse goes unreported. Children are afraid to talk about it. Children are scared, they're threatened. And we see this especially with the grooming techniques that people use to you know, you know, start 
looking at a child that they might want to molest or might want to abuse. And they, they, they groom them for that activity. And then they tell them if ever they talk about it, they'll hurt their family or they'll hurt their dog or, or they're going to hurt the child. So the children are very afraid to talk about it. So then how do you convince a kid to come forward in that scenario? Well, we tell them, number one, this abuse is not their fault. It's, it's not their fault. It is the adult's problem. And they are brave and they are strong and they have the right, and this is the motto that we use, they have the right to be safe, strong, and free. They have the right to make choices that affect them in their world. They have the freedom to choose to talk about it. And there are people that are there to help them through that. Okay, now are you seeing results from this program in Washoe County? We do. We see, we see very good results with our program. About 12% of the overall population of the kids we talk to do come forward to either their teacher, their counselor, um, their school nurse, and they talk about the issues that they're having. Not, not all of the issues are abuse. Some of it's bullying. Some of it is domestic violence. Uh, some of it is just they need somebody to talk to. But that's, that's the seed that we want to plant. If something's not okay in their world, we want them to know whatever it is, they can talk about it and there are people out there to listen. Yeah, now when you get to your sixth grade um, curriculum, it does include a fair bit about social media and bullying, right. um, which I imagine is a, is a recent-ish addition with oh. technology. Um, I mean, is, is this kind of taking over as the, as the new issue for that age range, or is physical bullying still as much of a problem as it used to be? You know, social media is really big, and uh, in my program, we, we have to realize that when we started in 1984, the, the world was a different place. You didn't have cell phones. You didn't have email. You know, you didn't have these things. And so, as the threats to children change, our program has to change to address those threats. And so we look at the sixth grade program. And when I wrote the sixth grade program, I sat on the playground with sixth graders and was shocked, <laughs> uh, scared a little bit about how mean they can be to each other. Oh, yeah. And so in order to combat that, you have to have a program that's just as powerful and just as in your face, if you will, as the kids are to each other. And when we bring these kids up to role play with us, they feel this. They feel the power of, my gosh, this bullying is horrible. This, this interaction on social media is really horrible. It's not nice at all. And so we're hoping by giving them that opportunity to interact with us in these situations that they feel how bad it is and maybe not go there at all. Yeah. Now, ultimately, too, you know, looking far down the line, if you're able to curb these problems and get them help early on, the hope is that they can lead productive lives, not end up um, committing crimes themselves. Because there are a lot of studies that show that uh, prison populations, the huge majority of the inmates were abused either physically or sexually as kids. Mm -hmm. um, they were bullied. You know, this is, it's really common that these cycles kind of perpetuate the problem. That's true, and, and it's like any other illness. If it goes untreated, it doesn't get better. And so reaching out to kids at a young age, having them address their issues, getting the help that they need as a, young, as a youngster, well, then they have the propensity to maybe not go into that spiral, that, that ripple effect that, uh, that abuse can, can cause, you know, underemployment, underachievement. Uh, risky behaviors, addiction problems, and the propensity to abuse other kids. Okay, so um, how are you funded and do you need donations? Yes, uh, <laughs> we do need donations. We actually are a standalone nonprofit. The, uh, the issue is big. We go into all the elementary schools in Washoe, Story, and Lyon counties. But we do this with funding that we provide ourselves. We realize the, the school districts are strapped. They, they don't have the funding for this. And so what we try to do is we write grants, we fundraise, we'll do special events, 
we look for quarters on the ground, whatever <laughs> we have to do to make sure we can bring our program to the schools and to the children at no cost to the families or to the school districts. Okay, so you need financial help. Do you also need volunteers? We love volunteers and uh, there's always a place for volunteers in, in our organization, whether they want to help present the workshops to the children or help with data and statistics or grant writing. I've got a place for all volunteers. Okay, <laughs> if they want to get in contact with you, how do they do it? They do it by calling me at 348-0600 and we'll come in and we'll have a conversation and see what we can put together. Okay, we've got about a minute left. So I guess if parents are watching this thinking, all right, I'm gonna get the ball rolling, I wanna talk to my kid, what would your best piece of advice be uh, to have these conversations get them you know, started on this conversation? Communication is so huge with parents and kids. I can't, I can't stress enough the fact that parents need to listen, not only to what their children are saying, but sometimes what they're not saying in their behaviors. If they're fearful of going to somebody's house or feeling uncomfortable about being with somebody or talking to somebody, that's a huge message. Maybe there's something they're not saying and the parents need to take the initiative to say, what's wrong? Is there something you want to talk about? And when children talk about something, parents need to listen and believe them because that's what we find so often is that children are afraid that, that no one will listen or believe what they say. All right, Rebecca, thank you so much for Thank time. you so much. Sure, appreciate it. Well, that is it for this episode of Face the State. We'll see you next week.